Today's speaker is Dr. Carla Cotwright-Williams of the Department of Defense. She'll be talking about a mathematician's journey to public service. And I'm going to say a few words about Carla. Dr. Carla Cartwright-Williams serves as a technical director within the Department of Defense. While at the Pentagon, she served as the first chief of data science and artificial intelligence at the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, the DOD's new center for excellence for AI. Prior to working with the Department of Defense, she began her public service in academia, serving over 10 years in research and teaching. She has conducted research with both NASA and the US Navy. In 2012, she was awarded the American Mathematical Society Congressional Fellowship. And during her time on Capitol Hill, she worked as a staffer on the majority staff of the US Senate Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee. In addition to covering a number of policy areas, she worked on the congressional hearing examining emergency preparedness surrounding the 2013 Boston Marathon bombings. She served as a hardy Apple Information Technology Fellow at the US Social Security Administration headquarters in Baltimore, Maryland. As an IT fellow, Dr. Cartwright Williams worked on a variety of high profile agency IT projects, including creating fraud analysis in the Office of Anti-Fraud Programs and the launch of the Social Security Agency's cloud infrastructure. Dr. Cotwright Williams is the chair of policy and advocacy and a member at large for the executive committee for the Association of Women in Mathematics. Dr. Cotwright Williams holds a PhD in mathematics and a 2019 autobiographical book entitled Mathematician's Journey of Public Service was published by Springer. She's been an invited speaker and panelist across the U.S. speaking to audiences about her research, career transitions, and mentoring. And I would also like to say I've personally known Carla for 20 years. We were in the EDGE program together and we were actually roommates. Um, so I know Carla to be a wonderful, caring, um, and just completely sweet human being. I love her so much and I'm so glad that she answered the call for this talk today. So without further ado, I want to bring you my friend, um, someone who I look up to, Carla Cotwright Williams. Thank you, Emil. Uh, Emil has been really uh, great at giving these introductions that make you wanna cry. So <laughs> I'm not gonna cry, I'm gonna do my best uh, to hang in here, but thank you for such a gracious uh, introduction. Um, I am so honored to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Um, it is just a neat thing to be invited to share your story. And as you, as you were reading um, some of my bio there, I was like, wow, I want to know who she is. <laughs> She's pretty awesome. So I, I'm glad to be her. <laughs> uh, so let me share my screen. Yeah, so today I want to talk about uh, my story, you know, how I have got uh, to this point in my career. Um, some of you know the story because I, I try to share it uh, with with folks because it's it's a different path than I think um, many um, have seen within the math community in recent years. And I think um, a number of people are looking for uh, alternative paths. If it, and maybe alternative is not the, uh, the right word because it, it means that there's maybe something just really different about it. but. Um, additional paths, <laughs> uh, you know, career paths within the math community. And so I'm glad to just share um, my story uh, with you all. Uh, so growing up, I always had people around me, you know, who were helping others. And um, I really got, I, I was very active in my community uh, and through my church and my at school. Uh, and I, I found these two pictures, as you can tell, that um, I have a cabbage patch there. Those are my grandmother. So um, up at the, um, on the left, that's Louise Cotwright. And in the lower right is uh, Fern Jones. And th those ladies, uh, first of all, let me just point out that they really seem very interested in my cabbage patch doll. <laughs> so this was a Christmas morning. Uh, and I just, uh, you know, it's not about the doll. I just, I thought the pictures were really great, but um, they were such caring women, and I feel like um, that a lot of the strength and character that I have um, was uh, transmitted through my parents, um, you know, by these ladies, and they were tough cookies. <laughs> they didn't take much stuff from anybody, uh, and so just seeing their life and, and living out their legacy uh, is, is, a, is, a, um, is an honor, and I am, take great pride in it. 
uh, the wonder years. So I had a lot of opportunities to, um, you know, take advantage of, you know, different learning opportunities in my communities, like going to museums and the summer uh, enrichment activities they would have. Um, even with school, some of the summer school was actually fun for me uh, because it was a lot of ex extracurricular learning. Um, but I, I was not always the most motivated student. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it showed my grades, unfortunately. Uh, and I'm not even sure what that certificate was there about, <laughs> uh, probably just attendance because my parents made sure I attended school. Uh, but once I got there, I, I may not have done everything I could do. Um, but in high school, I attended a, um, uh, summer program for uh, minority engineering. And this was at the time when there were still affirmative action programs. And so um, it was, you know, it's why the name minority engineering program, but uh, learned various um, engineering topics from uh, grad engineering grad students. Uh, and so that was really my first exposure to advanced math, uh, you know, beyond algebra. And, and I, I didn't take calculus in, in undergrad. Uh, but so some advanced math, like transformations and that type of thing. Uh, and so that was really a, a great exposure because, I mean, I was born in inner city Los Angeles, but I was born to parents who, um, you know, worked in, not that people don't work in inner city Los Angeles, but, um, you know, I had a, an environment where I knew I was, the education was valued and I knew, um, I didn't know exactly how, but I knew I was going to have to go to college. Uh, and so that was something that my parents always instilled uh, in, in me and my brothers. Uh, so, you know, like I mentioned, I was not necessarily a um, great student. Uh, and I uh, laugh about it now, but when I used to tell students about, you know, failing out of school, they, um, wonder what was I doing? You know, I must have been up to something really <laughs> nefarious or something interesting. Uh, and I wasn't, I was act actually at church quite a lot. Um, and, uh, so this is just a picture of one Sunday morning. Uh, so it's, it looks very churchy. And, uh, but if you, if you look at the length of my skirt, you know, I probably uh, wasn't dressed appropriately. <laughs> it's a little short, right? But uh, uh, yeah, so, you know, it's just funny because there, there, there's so many things that students encounter uh, that just can be distracting. And uh, thankfully, this was something that was, uh, you know, not anything that would get me in big trouble by being a part of, um, uh, but it wasn't really helpful to me as a student. Uh, but through actually my participation at work, uh, at, at church rather, I worked at, actually at my church uh, in undergrad. Um, I also participated with our Skid Row ministry, for example, um, making food um, prep for uh, folks on Skid Row and sorting through rotten foods and all to, you know, uh, prepare things that were uh, going to be, um, you know, shared amongst the community. So I, I learned some valuable life lessons. Um, and, um, you know, I, maybe that's attributes to, you know, being a good person, uh, but it didn't help to me being a, a good math student for sure. Uh, and as a result, actually, I was uh, kicked out of undergrad. Um, I was on academic probation for a couple of semesters and the way the university was set up, uh, I, would, I was kicked out um, after those two semesters. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, it's a lesson learned. I, I share with students though, um, especially when I was teaching at, you know, your job is to be a student. And uh, it's a life lesson I think we all can uh, appreciate because if we're doing research or if we're teaching uh, now, you know, we need to be focused on that and be mindful of, of what we're doing and not just, you know, blow it off because it's not fun. <laughs> it's not always fun. Um, moving on. Uh, so I was actually admitted to grad school despite my challenges. Um, in undergrad, uh, I uh, sought out an HBCU, an historically black college, uh, Southern University in Baton Rouge. And I, I did that because a number of people who were in the LA area, who had come back to the LA area had um, attended HBCU and they just seemed really different. And I wanted to learn more about that. I wanted to be, you know, experience what they experienced that they just really came back more well-rounded, uh, had a better sense of self. Uh, and so I sought out uh, the science and math education PhD program at Southern University. And uh, I was conditionally admitted because I didn't have the grades, uh, but my GRE scores were you know, decent enough to um, get me in. 
And I don't know if you're familiar with these types of admissions. Uh, I was, I had to take uh, undergrad, um, upper division undergraduate courses to, um, you know, get caught up to demonstrate that I, um, you know, could do graduate work. Um, so, yeah, so I, I'm so grateful that they, they admitted me. Actually, once I got there, uh, that I received funding. Uh, they had just, uh, was, they were just awarded a particular funding from NSF and um, I was the one student who needed it most uh, being from out of state. And um, so thankfully I was, I was funded there. Uh, for, for whatever reason, I decided to write a, a master's thesis. I didn't have to for this program. I could have just taken the coursework and tested out. Um, but for some reason, it seemed like a really good thing to do, good experience. Um, so I sought out uh, to do a thesis. And my thesis advisor was Dr. Stella Ashford, uh, a wonderful woman. She's since passed away. Um, I can't say more things that are so great about her. She was just awesome. It was, we worked one-on-one -on -one quite often um, throughout my two years there at Southern. And almost on a daily basis, uh, I sought out her feedback. You know, do you think I can do this? Because uh, I, I was, I was in a, I was had to get the master's degree, even though I was in a PhD program, because uh, you had to get a master's in your area of concentration. Uh, so that's why I was doing the math uh, masters. But um, you know, aside from demonstrating that I could do the math, which I was really focused on because I knew I had a lot to make up for. Um, she, she just really gave me a different perspective of who I was um, as, a, as a black woman and as a, as a budding mathematician, uh, that's something I did not get in undergrad. Um, now there were great professors in, at my school, but I also had those tough experiences where you have uh, maybe someone telling you to get out the major, change majors. <laughs> I had a professor told me that. Uh, well, he told me a nice story about, um, uh, another student who had changed to journalism and had a really was really happy. Uh, and so he encouraged me to explore those types of things for myself. Uh, but maybe with spite, I don't know what it was uh, that incurred, you know, that made me want to uh, pursue the graduate degree despite uh, hearing that negative feedback. Um, but she was awesome. Dr. Ashford was awesome. She took me into her home. I met her family. My, when my computer wasn't working, she let me come over and use her computer when it was uh, on the weekends and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, mentoring is, is critically important, I believe. And if for, in fact, for my entire career, uh, I've benefited from having really great mentors. Uh, in fact, one of the ultimate mentoring programs uh, would be the EDGE program. And I, I guess it's not technically defined as a mentoring program, but it's uh, a program that probably many of you are familiar with. Uh, it's a bridge program for women entering uh, PhD programs in math. And again, that's how I met um, Emil and probably some other folks on here. Uh, that's how I got to know you guys. Uh, but changed my life. Again, having a community of like-minded people just so happen to be women. Uh, we have some male edgers as well, um, but it just really gave me, a, again, a different view of myself that I had not had uh, up until that point. And so 20 years later, lifelong friends at this point um, and a community that really is just supportive. And so I, I'm just so thankful to have been a part of it. And in fact, what's funny about the EDGE program is that I was waitlisted <laughs> uh, when I applied. And so, uh, you know, I was brokenhearted, of course, got just thought it was a really great program. Um, and I got a call and say, we have an opening. And, um, but Dr. Ashford has said, she said, well, it's not that they don't want you. They just don't have space for you, right? <laughs> and so that gives you a different perspective on life. It's not that they just, you know, you're not good enough. It's just that there's not enough space for you. So that was a great life lesson I was able to take away uh, from that experience. Uh, so again, many of you all are familiar with the PhD process. Uh, I, you know, I, I think it's possible to be a great mathematician, uh, even a great math student and do other things, but it's really hard. <laughs> uh, and you do have to really be focused uh, as, a, as, a, as a math student, especially in grad school. Uh, but I did uh, participate in other extracurricular activities. I was uh, elected the vice president of our graduate student council. Uh, and I participated with Lobbying on the Hill, uh, which was my first exposure to that. 
Uh, and uh, in fact, this picture, it was of, um, we flew to um, uh, San Francisco. Uh, and in fact, that the uh, graduate dean is, is standing back there behind us. Um, but, you know, to receive an award that on behalf of the graduate school, because we were um, with, especially, I'm sorry, namely around the uh, health insurance work that we were doing. So, um, you know, doing good things, but not necessarily doing focus directly on the math. So I, I think these types of experiences um, help develop me as a person and are, have been beneficial for my career now. But I, I really think that if you're going to be a math student, you need to be focused on math as much as possible. Uh, and so the, it, was, it was a challenge branching out then. Um, and, and to some extent, it, it may have not been ideal, but um, uh, you know, you just try to make the best of everything. But I had a great advisor, um, James Reed, uh, and that's how I got into Matroid Theory and all. Um, very supportive environment just at Ole Miss uh, in general. But, and I met my husband there, uh, with then, uh, you know, boyfriend at the time. But uh, yeah, so I mean, great experience, but I wasn't necessarily as uh, focused as I could have been because um, of these other activities, but they helped develop me as a person. So there's a little bit of a balance there that uh, you have to seek to achieve. Uh, so this is not a math talk, but this is uh, you know a little bit of matroid theory here. Um, I really didn't spend a whole lot of time with matroids after finishing my dissertation, uh, maybe about a year or so, uh, because I was always looking for something that I could um, you know use directly in the real world. And I, I didn't really know how to do that uh, with matroids. Um, and until just recently, I learned you know, more about submodular functions, which is just the rank function. But at the time, I didn't really know. Uh, and so this is, this is just um, some information that came from uh, a, pre a presenter, uh, Jan Vodrock of uh, IBM. So it's, this is not my work, but this is just a nice summary, I thought, and I wanted to share it. Uh, so I graduated, thankfully. <laughs> Uh, and in fact, uh, graduating from Ole Miss uh, in 2006, we were recognized as um, for, there were four African-American uh, PhDs in math granted that year. Um, and so that was you know, pretty notable. It made nationwide news. It wasn't as big uh, as people may have hoped, but uh, it was pretty exciting to be a part of that. But you know, the, the job market even then, um, and this is at least over a decade ago, um, was a challenge. And, it's, it's very challenging now, uh, you know, especially given the pandemic, um, academia, jobs are being cut, uh, budgets are being cut, and they're just not the same amount of jobs are available. Um, but I think that if, and I think these are the types of talks that are useful to help change the perception of what it means to work outside of academia. Uh, we should not look at at jobs outside of academia as consolation prizes or that you're less than as a mathematician uh, if you're not working in academia or in a tenure track position. Uh, and so I, I don't know, it's my opinion. Uh, I, I think some would might agree, um, but you know, I think because of the environment uh, and, the, and the job market, I think we need to really encourage students um, and even ourselves consider other opportunities that are out there. I think it makes the world a better place. So I hit the job market. I had a visiting assistant professorship at Wake Forest University uh, and was there for two years. Uh, got married and uh, moved to uh, Hampton, Virginia uh, where my husband was uh, in a tenure track position. While there, I always knew I wanted to um, just do something more. Um, I didn't wanna just always be in the classroom so while I was at uh, teaching at Hampton and then ultimately, um, I, well, I'll talk about it later, but uh, I just, I learned about uh, the AAAS um, Science Technology Policy Fellowship. And in particular, um, AMS has their um, congressional fellowship uh, after attending a SACNIS conference early on in my, uh, after graduation. And I applied. Uh, and this is a lesson, this is one of these lessons of how to find a job outside of academia. 
you, you may apply and then you may not get it. <laughs> and then you apply again, then you may not get it. Uh, but I, um, you know, having experienced the failure at, that I did in undergrad, I think uh, gave me some of that tenacity and grit to keep, to keep trying. Uh, and I learned, I asked around and I learned what it would take to make myself a better um, candidate, you know, better applicant. Uh, and so I sought out opportunities to do that. Um, so, like I said, I um, got married, moved. I took, took another uh, visiting assistant professor position at Hampton University. Uh, the next year, I, I secured a, a tenure track position at Norfolk State University. Um, but in, you know, seeking out what it would take to make me a better uh, candidate applicant for these other opportunities, uh, I took on uh, faculty research opportunities with the government. So NASA, I, I don't think they still have this same pr program, but they had a faculty research program. Uh, the Navy still has their summer faculty research programs. Uh, and, and you can look at uh, uh, ONR uh, to find those opportunities. And there's some specific opportunities for HBCU uh, faculty as well. Uh, and feel free to reach out to me, I can give you that information, but a, a simple Google search uh, would point that out to you as well. Um, but this gave me the opportunity to uh, learn about math in the real world. You know, how does the government need, you know, what does the government do with their math? Uh, there was just more application than I didn't know about. And, uh, you know, having a chance to, you know, work in the real world was a great experience. Uh, so at, at NASA, I uh, worked with the team uh, and we looked at, um, diagnostic systems health of avionic vehicles. And so with my math uh, graph theory connected background, uh, looked at the relationship between Bayesian networks and random graphs. Uh, and just so happened to have the opportunity, we had a poster um, day uh, session and um, there I, I am pictured with uh, Lieutenant Ahura or Nichelle Nichols uh, as uh, is her <laughs> birth name. Uh, but so that was really exciting. The uh, organizers, the um, uh, leads of the um, uh, NASA's uh, ed um, educational uh, programs uh, made a point to introduce her to the uh, one math PhD, a black woman, you know, uh, and they wanted us to, to meet. So that was a great honor. Uh, and I just am really excited about that picture. So I always like to show it. Uh, I'm not necessarily a Star Trek fan, but how can you not be when you meet uh, Lieutenant O'Hor? <laughs> uh, and these other two pictures were uh, uh, a flight simulator. Um, and so that's me standing outside of it and inside I'm sitting in the cockpit of the flight simulator. So a lot of fun stuff. Uh, and again, post PhD as a faculty member, I was able to do this research. So, you know, people ask me all the time, what can I do to um, you know, improve myself so that I can uh, take on these other types of opportunities that are out there outside of academia. And all these, these uh, skills are, are useful in academia as well. So look, don't get me, get me wrong here. Uh, but things that I did uh, in addition to the research opportunities was to uh, take uh, graduate level courses in public policy in this case. Uh, and I did that at a local university. These days you have more online courses. And so, you know, you can uh, really um, take advantage of those learning opportunities. Uh, I continue to, to work in my community, uh, working with uh, middle school girls and a STEM enrichment program. I volunteered with local political campaigns, uh, which I don't do that now as a, as a um, government employee, but um, then it was great exposure to um, just understands the ins and outs of, of an important part of our um, society. Uh, I attended conferences. Um, I attended conferences that weren't all math conferences. Uh, some were non-math uh, and I networked. I met new people and then I met more new people. <laughs> uh, and so this was um, a little video. Hopefully it plays uh, loud enough. But so I attended uh, AAAS, um, uh, com um, it was the annual meeting but they had a workshop, communicating science workshop. And so I had the top video. <laughs> uh, it was a little short uh, clip on describing math, uh, everyday math. So let me see if I can make this work. Tell me about the work that you do. 
Well, I'm a mathematician whose goal is to share how math is used in everyday life. Math is used to calculate the interest on a credit card. Math is used to calculate the doses of medicine that you take. My favorite math is used to calculate the discount on a pair of shoes. Doing math helps you to think critically. It helps you to train your brain. Math is an international subject. Everyone uses math. Everyone does math. So, uh, you know, it, you don't have to necessarily, you know, have these types of experiences, but I think that um, just expanding those soft skills, uh, we, I mean, we're always really focused on, on the hard, uh, you know, quantitative skills, analytical skills, but, you know, these soft skills are important too, especially when you're working with real world, um, in real world situations where, uh, folks are not going to have a PhD. They're, they may not even have a college degree, but you still need to communicate effectively with them, maybe even complex uh, technical topics. Um, so, I, in 2012, I was awarded the Congressional Fellowship, American, uh, AMS Congressional Fellowship, and um, as uh, mentioned before, had a chance to work on the Hill. This is one of the great pictures. This is from the speaker's um, office. Uh, so, this was, you know, well before uh, recent events, so you know we had uh, access to um, to some you know unique sp spaces within the Capitol. Uh, so this is one of my favorite pictures. Uh, and little did I know that this would be the launch um, of a of a, a career, a new career path. Um, I did. I took leave. I was on a not sabbatical, but I took leave from um, my tenure track position, and. Uh, by the spring of, of the uh, fellowship year, I was deciding to resign from my, my position because I knew I wanted to stay in this new, new realm that I had uh, advanced to. Um, <laughs> I, I like this because I'm now a cover girl. <laughs> uh, we had a nice little photo shoot and all, but um, unfortunately one of the few um, mathematicians who's participated through uh, the AAAS program. Uh, but so really excited to have been a part of it. But, you know, ch I chose to leave academia after, you know, working on the Hill because it was such a life-changing experience. Um, you learn so much about the world. Uh, when I watch the news these days, I'm like, okay, I think we're gonna be okay because I know how the inner workings of the government are. And you know we're not just going to collapse as a nation, uh, and so that that's reassuring. But it, it's it's reassuring because you know how it works, right? It just like um, students. Well, you may not know everything about your university, but uh, some of the fal your faculty, you know, your professors do, and they so that, you know maybe it's not going to just collapse right before you, but maybe things might change. Uh, but it's it's helpful to know the inner workings of of a complex system and seeing how my work could be impactful to everyday citizens, even if they never know who I am, uh, was important to me. And so um, that policy making, so, you know, making uh, decisions on uh, actions that might impact others uh, is policy making. And uh, I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to continue to be a part of that. Uh, and then as you can see, math and policy making go hand in hand. You've got to think analytically. Uh, so when you're watching the news and you say, why don't they make better decisions, right? Maybe they need some more mathematicians around, right? <laughs> so um, I, I'm trying to do my best to be in those spaces to help them make better decisions. Carla, uh, could you say one more time what AAAS stands for? I think I missed it. Yeah, sure. The American Association for the Advancement of Sciences. Yeah, so they, um, they publish uh, science magazine. Um, yeah, but it's it's like the largest scientific organization in the world, yeah. Um, so I was a part of a, a small analytics company and we had a project um, with US Citizenship and Immigration Services. Uh, and so I had the opportunity to learn, this is after the Congressional Fellowship, um, I had the opportunity to learn everything there is to know about the permanent resident um, immigration application process. Um, which is something, you know, growing up in LA, I didn't necessarily need to know, but I did know that we, there were a lot of immigrants around and, and it helped to learn um, and understand the complexities of such a complex system. You know, people have a lot of opinions about immigration, 
but they really knew how complex the system is, um, they might have different opinions. Um, you know, one thing I'll say about just working in private industry uh, in this way with a um, consulting firm or contract organization um, is that, you know, it, it can be difficult if you, depending on the project, whether or not it, it's a long-term project or short-term project, uh, smaller companies um, may not offer the same stability as say a larger company, you know, Booz Allen's and um, Lido's, those are, you know, those bigger companies have a different kind of uh, reputation and longer standing reputation. They often have uh, larger contracts as well. Uh, but so it was a great experience. It gave me a, a different, a new view of how uh, analytics and quantitative thinking are used in the, in the federal government. Um, so that, yeah, that was a really great experience. Uh, so security, we've talked about that. So I actually, after um, the consulting work, um, had some downtime, it was unexpected. Um, and so I was looking for a job. I was applying across the federal government for you know, jobs. Uh, you should know that most jobs are not listed as mathematician. Uh, in fact, that's how I came across this position as a computer scientist. Uh, I am nowhere near a computer scientist by training, but um, you know, the skills that come along with being a computer scientist are ones that are very common uh, as mathematicians that we have as mathematicians. So um, it was a great experience. Um, you learn again, uh, Social Security supports what, well at the time it was like 65 million. I think there's more millions of people in the country these days. Uh, but to understand it, learn about the system, understand a system that provides benefits um, uh, to the to residents and uh, that we all are paying into the system. Right? So to understand this really complex system that we all are a part of uh, was really a great experience. And so I uh, was there for a couple of years and actually at the start of the last administration, I um, chose to leave uh, looking for other opportunities, which is what brought me to the Department of Defense. So at, within uh, my work at the DOD, I um, have been a data scientist. That was a formal title. Um, and as mentioned, I worked at the Jake, um, at the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center at the Pentagon. Um, and I say, well, how, or is she just really that smart? Well, yeah, yeah, I'm smart, right? But I also took advantage of opportunities that were, um, that came across my, my path. Uh, and and that, that's a, another, little tip I would share with everyone is that sometimes you got to go for it. <laughs> you know, sometimes you may go for something, you don't know everything about it, but you go for it anyway, because you, you know it's a great opportunity. Uh, and so that's what happened with the Jake. I, I was not uh, brought in to um, serve as the lead uh, for this division, uh, but because of my skills and experiences, I was able to step in and manage a really difficult um, you know, startup because I had uh, experience working with people, I had uh, experience the, the technical knowledge, uh, and in addition, the um, congressional experience gave me exposure to the government uh, and understanding how the government works so that I could um, utilize that, that same knowledge um, with this organization. So yeah, you just never know. And in fact, I, a good friend, mentor uh, said to me recently, she said, you're so brave, you go for it. you go for these opportunities and you know it's funny because I never thought about it like that <laughs> um, you know so, you know they say don't look a good don't look a gift horse in the mouth uh, well sometimes you got to look at that the horse right <laughs> and just jump on and, and, and go for the ride uh, and so you know don't be don't be shy you know put yourself out there and I, I think you know you take calculated risk but it's you know, you don't, don't just quit your job, right? <laughs> Have something lined up. But I think there's a lot of opportunities that if you uh, gave yourself the opportunity to uh, just try it out, you might be really surprised on how well you fare. Uh, this is, uh, you know, people ask me, I've been asked quite a lot about how to become a data scientist uh, because it is something that, it's a hot topic these days, it's a hot field. A uh, number of mathematicians are looking for, you know, other um, revenue streams, and this is one that people are able to do without um, a lot of formal training um, or a formal job. You can do, um, you know, data science type work without being a formal data scientist. 
Uh, but to that end, uh, some of these titles that people hold throughout the government are not necessarily data scientists or mathematician by name, uh, interdisciplinary scientists, operations research analysts. Uh, so you'd be surprised. So if you're applying for jobs, keep that in mind, right? You're not gonna always find mathematician in the title. Uh, and this was a uh, job announcement just recently, early this year. Um, and so just to give you an idea. So, you know, we, I, I don't know, I, I felt this for a little bit and I think some others uh, have had the same feelings where you feel like, well, I didn't necessarily have an applied math degree. So I can't do this kind of work. Um, or I, um, you know, I was in algebraic topology or whatever. And it's not, maybe it's not, you know, necessarily data science, but you can, you can always, you, ha you have enough math, uh, even as an undergrad, you, you, once you get that degree, you have enough math for, for most jobs in the government. And um, one of the great things about um, many agencies is that there are opportunities to train and, and learn more on the job um, that you may not get in other environments. Um, so, you know, risk, again, taking risk. Um, none of the opportunities that I've mentioned up until now have been really that risky, right? Um, they've been a part of established programs. Uh, the, like I said, the AMS program had, I was like the ninth uh, uh, fellow, but the AAAS program uh, had been around 40 years. So it wasn't really risky in that, um, I took the, the opportunity or applied for the opportunity, but I could have always gone back to my tenure track position. Um, so be open to those things that are not necessarily traditional uh, within your communities. Um, there are other ways to use your math um, and you know, follow those interests that you have. Maybe you're interested in genetics. And I was just re listening to a book recently about um, you know, like my uh, 23 and me and those types of um, tests. Uh, and the, the genetics of it all. And it's, it's interesting because you, you know, again, you have the skills of being analytical, uh, quantitative thinkers, those are not everyday skills. <laughs> uh, and, and so the, the world needs, you know, more of, of us. And uh, I think if we're open to it, we can find those opportunities. Um, one way to find those opportunities is to network. Uh, it's not a natural thing, I think, for a lot of us in math, you know, we tend to be maybe more introverted. Um, but, you know, you don't know everything. Others will know more, and some people will know more people and can introduce you to, to new people who can introduce you to more people who might be specifically at a, say, a company or an agency that you're interested in. Uh, so just network. Uh, this is a great opportunity to network, uh, even attending uh, this event, you know, feel free to reach out to me. My email is not there, but I, I'll make sure to put it in the chat before we're done. Um, and but just be open and try new things. You, you really don't know, right? You don't know how great you'll be at something in, until you try it. So um, I say try new things. Um, like I said earlier, uh, many of the roles did not require me to use uh, the math that I was doing as a, you know, for my dissertation research, I, I have not used that math in the, in the everyday uh, work that I've done. Uh, but the skills, right, again, the technical writing, the analytical quantitative thinking uh, come in handy daily. Uh, this is a list that I'd like to share, and I'm, I'm gonna wrap up with this. Um, it's a list that I just found a summary online. There are other uh, tools and books that are available to us. Um, the Big Network has a book about big jobs. Uh, big is a business industry and government uh, jobs. Rachel Levy was one of the uh, main authors for that. Uh, but there's, you know, as a PhD, and I realize not everyone on here has a PhD, and I'm not saying you have to get a PhD, uh, but I've talked to a lot of PhDs who are asking, what else can I do, right? They think of teaching and research, but both of those things come with so many skills uh, that are translatable to uh, the rest of the world. So project management skills, entrepreneurship, uh, uh, knowledge and information skills uh, are, are, are key, and uh, communication skills. You know, e I, I do think that even if you have years of teaching, you probably could brush up on your communication by um, you may be taking a formal course, 
or um, doing some public speaking that's not necessarily related to your research uh, because you have to be able to communicate to everyday people, <laughs> uh, which is not always an easy thing. If you can't uh, you know, describe your dissertation research uh, to your grandmother or to your, um, or to your middle school age niece, uh, maybe you could you know, work on that some. Uh, and so in fact, just recently, I've had a chance to take a couple of communications courses, uh, which I have found very valuable. And so with that, I am done. <laughs> Um, yeah, but thank you again for allowing me to share my story. I think, I hope that uh, everyone can just take away that, you know, this is at least one example of a person who um, has, you know, made some strides and, and uh, even paved the way for others that there's other opportunities out there for your math. I didn't necessarily talk about pub public policy, but I feel like public policy is just everything around us, right? Whether or not it's with the government directly or even with how your um, universities are run, that's a public policy of sorts. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I'm ready to take any questions. Wow, Carla, thank you so much. Like there was a lot in your talk that um, I know I took away. I, there were so many great tidbits there. Like one of the things that really stood out for me just now was how you said to just go for it and talking about your own courage and you're so right sometimes you just have to step out on a limb so that amongst many other things that i have just taken away from that talk thank you so so much this is this was really great um really appreciative um so yep yeah yeah clapping hands <laughs>